My grandma is a kind, funny, optimistic old lady. It's weird how we can see the same person but make different observations. She's always been kind and caring, but has always had a firm stance on education. One of her favorite sayings is read your book. As a child who wants to run and have fun, hearing the words read your book is not the most exciting. I've heard this so much, in fact, as I stand here telling you this story, I can hear her saying read your book in the back of my mind. And I know when I call her and tell her about this talk, the conversation will probably go, study, pass, look after everyone, and that's right, you guessed it, read your book. My grandma was forced to leave formal education early. And at 18, she'd moved to England. Imagine moving country, not being able to read and write properly. Because the opportunity to finish her education was snatched away from her, my grandma has always valued education more than most. She taught herself to read and write, which she can do in more than one language, and is financially astute. Although I sometimes think the financial literacy part is more down to her Nigerian DNA rather than arithmetic. Because it did not come easy, my grandma's thirst for knowledge was passed down to my mum, who chose to pursue further education and is a first generation graduate with two master's degrees. Three words that felt like nagging now had a whole new meaning. Read your book reminds us not everyone is lucky enough to have books and access to education. Therefore, we should value and cherish it more. Perhaps we have a moral obligation to help the educationally disfranchised. 76 million Nigerian adults are illiterate. On the 7th September 2021, this was the headline of an article published by Tribune. The article went on to say 38% of Nigerian population cannot read or write despite increasing efforts to improve literacy levels in the country. At a news conference marking the 2021 International Literacy Day celebration, the Minister of Education made it known that in addition to the poor literacy rate, 6.9 million children are not in school. In Nigeria, education is not free. It is costly and inaccessible. Some do not have the opportunity to receive an education, whether formal or non-formal. Some are forced to begin work or travel long distances to get to school. Illiteracy and lack of education is a global issue. That is why the Sustainable Development Goal is to ensure inclusive and equitable, inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning for all. Even those who go to school face issues. Globally, two thirds of children are in school and will reach the final grade of primary school, but will not achieve minimum proficiency levels in reading. 137 million adolescents, about 60%, are in school, but not learning. Many confuse learning with education. We go to school to receive a formal education, but education and learning are very different. As my grandma has demonstrated, informal education is also powerful. My dad has always said some of the most intelligent people he's ever met have never stepped foot in a classroom. Same way some of the dumbest people he's ever met. Well, you catch his drift. For example, we learn about physics and velocity and speed in school. However, it wasn't until I went headfirst flying into a tree while riding my bike and laughing at my brother that I understood the true value of slowing down and always having one hand on the brake. That couples with my mom's scolding was enough to teach me a lesson. Don't you love African parents? <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is that education can exist outside of formal structures. Informal education is also powerful. And who knows, this may spark a quest for learning and lead to formal education further down in the line. The function of education is to teach one to think in intensively and critically. Martin Luther King. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think, Albert Einstein. What Martin Luther King and Albert Einstein are talking about is the disconnect between education and learning. They're talking about the soft and transferable skills which the World Economic Forum says are needed for the 21st century workplace. These include critical thinking, creativity, judgment, problem solving, and coordination with others. Currently, not all of these skills are being taught in all schools. After sitting my final, school, my final secondary school math exam, all I could think about was how I had this knowledge in my head that I was no longer using, and how there were people in similar situations to my grandma. I thought about how much I had learned from the many excellent teachers I had the privilege to learn from over the years. Perhaps it was time to give back.
Last summer, I joined Youth Promise. Youth Promise, YP for short, is an organization providing free virtual tutoring to underserved youth across the globe. They were formed during the pandemic to help those who do not have the resources to reach their full potential. Success is their mission. Their services aim to empower students using individual classes, group classes, and college and test prep courses taught by their qualified volunteers. Also, did I mention that Youth Promise is run by teenagers and young adults like myself? And they're relatively new. However, with a clear goal, this one profit has expanded and has helped so many people in such a short amount of time. Everyone is so kind and friendly and passionate about what they do. For example, not everyone in Youth Promise is in the same time zone. This means staying awake and helping people across continents to provide support. I've done it and I can tell you it's not easy. Not only does this show passion, but commitment and dedication. Also, while Youth Promise tutors students in subjects like math, English and science, they also take extra courses and encourage tutors with hobbies and interests to teach what they know and enjoy. They have, these classes stem from things like art, to public speaking, to even life skills. And they occasionally hold events, the most recent being a Christmas drive to give underprivileged children gifts for Christmas. Essentially, Youth Promise is an example of children teaching children. I think this is great and should be promoted more because it has so many advantages. For example, it's scalable. This means a large number of, of children can be reached in a short amount of time. It is relatively cheap as it does not require brick and mortar structures, which tend to be costly. It is accessible as we can reach children in hard to reach areas using technology. Also, on occasion, I've noticed that children tend to empathize more with other children than adults. And both parties benefit from this. Tutors benefit from tutoring as well. Tutoring can help to build confidence, communication skills, and emotional intelligence, which are all skills needed for the future. Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. He also said, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. He's right. However, for this to happen, it has to be accessible worldwide. Youth Promise has now begun outreaching. I was lucky enough to be chosen to be head of Nigerian operations. Although I'm ashamed to say that I fell asleep before my first meeting. I woke up an hour later asking where the Zoom link was. I'm still embarrassed to this day. However, I look forward to doing more with Youth Promise and organizations like it. It was empowering to hear a student say to me, I learned something. I also hope to eventually set up my own organization. Now, I'm not asking everyone who sees this talk to set up their own organization or become a teacher by profession, but, I, but I'm asking those who have access to education to find innovative ways of sharing it. A teacher's job is to impart knowledge. A teacher told me that. We can all be great teachers. I believe it is our jobs as students, especially those who have attended formal education, to share this knowledge. So please, read your book and share your knowledge with just one other person so we can tackle the challenges of illiteracy together. It all starts with three words and one person. <laughs>